I'm John Bond. Welcome to Move Yourself Happy. Made for fitness enthusiasts who want to make their passion their profession. Are you unhappy in your present job? Are you passionate about health and fitness? Do you want to release your true potential? If the answer is yes, this podcast is for you. I will be teaching you the specific knowledge that every trainer and coach needs to be successful. So listen closely as I share my expertise with you. So just like me, you can love what you do. Welcome back. Now, the last episode, I talked about hypertrophy. Some people call it hypertrophy, same thing, pronounce it however you like, and it basically means increasing muscle size. So it's training with the objective of increasing the size of your muscles. Now, in today's episode, I'm gonna be talking about relative strength. So I'm gonna cover what is relative strength, how can we calculate somebody's relative strength, what are the benefits of improving your relative strength, and how can we program to improve our client's relative strength? Let's begin. So first of all, what is relative strength? Well, strength is your ability to exert force. And with relative strength, it's how good is your ability to exert force in relation to your body weight? So I'm gonna give you an example. So imagine you've got two people, one weighs 50 kilos, one weighs 100 kilos and we work out that both of them can lift 100 kilos of weight from the floor. So at a barbell deadlift, their maximum lift for both of them is 100 kilos. Now, your assumption might be straight away is they're both as strong as each other. And if we're talking about in absolute terms, then you'd be correct. Absolute terms in relation to that specific lift. Yes, they have the same amount of strength but in relation to their body weight, no, they don't. Because the person who's 100 kilos, if we take their weight, 100 kilos, and we divide that by the amount of weight they're lifting off the floor, 100 divided by 100 equals one. So we can say that they have, uh, they can lift 100% of their body weight off the floor, or they have a strength to weight ratio of one for that lift. Now, if we take, the 50 kilo person, and we take 100 kilos and we divide it by 50, which is their body weight, then we get two. So that suggests that that person can lift 200% of their body weight off the floor, um, or you know, two times their body weight off the floor. So they have higher relative strength. And you can use that equation for every lift, you know, barbell back squats, you can do it for your upper body stuff, like pull-ups, how much weight can they lift off the floor, if you work out what their body weight is, plus any weight they might hang from them if they use a belt and they hang a dumbbell. Um, So absolutely every lift or exercise that you do, you can work out their relative strength from that. But what are the benefits? So what does it matter? Like why, why am I sounding so sort of obsessive over relative strength? Well, it's not that absolute strength doesn't have its place, and I will talk about that in the next episode, but relative strength, there is an argument to say perhaps we should care about a little bit more for two things really. One for health and quality of life, but actually for athleticism, you know, performance, sports performance. So let's talk about health first. Now, does it matter whether I can lift 100 kilos off the floor? Like, is that gonna improve the quality of my life? You know, maybe if I have a job where it involves a lot of heavy lifting and I am always moving stuff around, then perhaps, because if I'm strong in that movement, then I'll be able to do that with less risk of injury, fatigue, etc. But most people don't have to leave, lift 100 kilos off the floor. So there is an argument to say, all right, not entirely useful. Not a waste of time, but not entirely useful. But the things we do have to do on a regular basis is we have to get out of a chair. <laughs> we have to get out of our bed. Sometimes we might get down on the floor to play with our kids and we have to get up off the floor again. Now, when we do that, we're not necessarily, we don't have an external load, it's just our own body weight. So we're having to shift our body weight around. We need to have the strength to get our body weight out of a chair. We need to have the strength to get our body weight off the floor. And when it comes to playing a lot of sports, it usually involves 
moving our body weight around, you know, dynamically, fast, explosively. And if we've got a high level of relative strength and we can do that stuff. And now, take any sports, you think about a, a rugby player, for example. Now, absolute strength for those guys is important, specifically, you know, the front row props. Uh, and again, I'll talk about in the next episode, but they need to shift themselves quickly, don't they? When they get that ball, they've got to move. And if they haven't got very good strength in relation to their own body weight, that's going to be harder. So being very, very strong, it might mean that in absolute terms, you could have one of the lower strength ratio, sorry, what you might have the, one of the, the lower ends of strength within your team, but if you're the lightest person by far in your team, you could have the highest relative strength, which very likely means you're going to move faster, you're going to be more agile, you're going to be quicker. So it's very important to sort of understand that really. And I think as personal trainers and coaches, we are missing a, a trick really if we're not helping our clients develop their relative strength because it's automatically going to transfer over into improved quality of life. Now, when I did my master's in strength and conditioning, one of the things that I looked at was the tactical athlete. Now, if you've not come across this term before, a tactical athlete is kind of like an umbrella term really for anyone involved in uh, the military, law enforcement, even prison guards would come under the sort of tactical fitness umbrella term. Can, can do, certainly. So when I did my research, they would come under it. And relative strength came up a lot as an influencing factor for improved well-being, performance, and um, sort of free, um, not just improving the, how well they did the job, but also reducing the injury risk from doing their job. So let's just talk about that for example. So if you are, let's use the military, because that's an easy one. Um, in the military, you have to put on a backpack, go for long marches, runs, different terrains, etc. Now, if you're a bit of a lump, that's gonna be harder, isn't it? But if you're lighter, but you've got good relative strength, meaning you're strong for your size, so you can cope with that additional weight added on, and you can, you can run over different terrains and stuff comfortably, you're gonna perform better, but you're also gonna have a reduced injury risk because you're not so heavy. Now we know that obviously exercise is good for us, but when we're heavy and we're carrying loads and we're doing things a lot, we get increased wear and tear on our joints. Knees, hips, back, they are taking a lot of the load when we go for our runs and our walks and things. So to improve relative strength, one, th we think one thing we can do is Im improve our strength, but we can also reduce our body weight. So straight away, the ratio there improves. Our, our strength to body weight ratio improves. So we've got that, but then we also reduce the injury risk as well because we're not having to carry this, this extra load around all the time. So it becomes very, very important for people, like I say, that are in the military, you know, tactical athletes. So you've got that reduction in injury risk, We've got the improved performance because just naturally they're able to move around quicker and, and, and for prolonged periods of time without fatigue. Now also you need to climb, you know, climbing over obstacles and things. If you ever do things like um, Tough Mudder, I don't know if anyone's ever done that, um, but a lot of that is obstacles and the people with a high strength to body weight ratio, good relative strength, always excel on those bits. You know, they're over the walls quickly and they're jumping off the ground again quickly once they're under, you know, going through the cargo nets. Um, you get the, the, the monkey bars much, much easier when you've got good grip strength in relation to your body weight. Imagine a 120 kilo person doing that, so much harder. So if you're a personal trainer, I really feel like you're missing a trick if you don't develop this in your clients because their quality of life and their general performance is naturally going to be better. And a lot of people, you know, I'm at the age now, so I'm 44, and I am thinking about, you know, I, I just want to be able to still run around with my children. When they have children, I'm a grandparent, I still want to be able to play with them. And I want to be able to get on the floor and get up again easily without sort of hurting my back and struggling to get out of a chair. I want to, I want to be climbing trees when I'm a granddad. That, 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 in fact, that's my life goal. <laughs> I want to be able to climb trees with my grandkids. So relative strength is really important for that good quality of life. Now, how do we do that? Well, surprise, surprise, 
body weight exercises. So doing stuff that practices, practices moving your own body weight around. Now, when you get clients in the early stages, they're gonna have poor strength to body weight ratio. They just will, most people do. Um, because most people now are over overweight or obese, so that's going to have an impact on that. Um, but also, we're just not used to tapping into the muscle that we have. So a lot of people will have underutilized muscle. So we don't necessarily have to build muscle in a client, we just teach them how to tap into muscle that already exists. So the average person, if they're untrained and sedentary, they probably are only utilizing 30, maybe 50%, probably more like 30% of their strength potential. So by getting them to do the things like the pull-ups, the chin-ups, the dips, the push-ups, the body weight squats, the lunges, holding plank positions, you start to train their brain to access muscles that they haven't accessed potentially ever, or certainly for a very long time. And then if you do the math on that, if you're already able to access 30% of your potential now, with training, you could be three times stronger without increasing your muscle mass. So that is a, that's a great benefit of working to a relative strength. Imagine the athleticism there. So you're the same person, but all of a sudden, you can exert three times your body weight in force. You're gonna be faster, more efficient, so that's something we can do now. You straight away, you know, you, if you're a trainer and you're listening to this, you might be picturing one of your clients and thinking, well, there's no way I can get them doing push-ups. They can't do push-ups. They can't do pull-ups. This is where your toolkit comes in as a as a PT and a coach, but also this is where the regressions come in. Every single exercise you can break down. So at Storm Fitness Academy, when we teach our guys how to do an exercise all the time. We're like, right, how can we regress this? What if the client can't do this? How can we regress this? What if the client finds it too easy? How can we progress this? Every exercise, there, there is a way that you can regress it and progress it. And with body weight, I mean, bands have been fantastic. I don't actually know how long bands have kind of been a thing. Um, it feels like they haven't been around as long as they should have, because they're such a simple design, it's a simple idea. When I first qualified in 99, we weren't taught about using bands for assisting with body weight exercises at all. But I mean, I live on them now, you know, I use them on clients all the time. So with things like pull-ups and chin-ups, you can just wrap the band or tie the band on the bar, stretch it down, foot goes inside it, and then you've got that, that stretchiness that actually assists with getting the body, the body up to the bar, you know, getting the chin over the bar for a pull-up or a chin-up. So bands can be used for every variation of pull up and chin up going. You can use them as well for uh, dips. So if you've got bar dips, you can place the band across the bars, you can place your knees on the band. That does exactly the same thing as if you're doing pull ups and chin ups. So bands are wonderful for that. Now when it comes to just doing things like uh, body weight exercises with the legs, you know, squats and lunges, now obviously we can reduce a range of motion. So if someone's struggling to do a squat or a lunge, well, one of the things you can do is just, just reduce the range. Now, obviously we, we always wanna be aiming long-term to have a good range of motion because people are then strong and have good mobility in a better range of motion. Better range, the better. We tap into more muscle fibers, and we improve mobility and flexibility. And when somebody does a lunge, for example, in re real life, that potentially is bending down to the ground, get nice and low and come back up again. If they only ever train in a short range, they won't be able to do that. So better ranges generally are always better if the person can do it safely. So we start off with a shorter range and the progression is to increase the range. Now, a lot of the time you'll find with that sort of stuff that the limiting factor might actually not be their mobility. It might just be their confidence and their coordination. And this is where suspension trainers are great. So if you don't know what a suspension trainer is, well, Google it for a start, um, but probably one of the leading brands of suspension trainer is the TRX. You might've heard of the TRX or seen them at your gym, but TRX is essentially, it's a band with handles and you can attach it to things. And if you're doing lunges and squats, you can hold on to it just to give yourself a bit of stability and a bit of balance. 
Now we don't want to be over reliance on this stuff forever, but it certainly helps with your clients in the early days. So if you're giving that to a client and you're going, right, let's try your squats, and they're like, oh, I don't really want to go down too low. You're like, well, hold on to the suspension trainer and then let's see how low you can go holding onto that. And guarantee they'll go down lower. And then over time, they'll develop the confidence to be able to do it without the suspension trainer. Single leg squats. I mean, single leg squats are actually very, very challenging. So they are not for beginners, and actually people that are very, very strong, very high levels of absolute strength, might be able to back squat twice their body weight, can't necessarily do a single leg squat because it's a different type of strength. It requires a lot more stability and balance and coordination. But using a suspension trainer, you'll see straight away that a lot of people can. They'll go straight down into that single leg squat, nice and deep, come back up. So they're great for that as well, not just beginners, but also advanced, advanced clients. So I'm a big fan of suspension trainers, big fan of bands. The other thing you can do is just give people a bit of comfort or peace of mind is to actually to use benches and boxes. So if you're trying to teach somebody to squat without the suspension trainer and you don't want them to use their hands, is just put that bench behind and just get them used to going down, sitting on the bench, coming back up again. Sounds very, very simple, but you can think about the practical applications of that as well. How much better is that for somebody who wants to improve their quality of life and well-being? You're teaching them how to sit down, stand back up without any problems. Now, if you're listening to this and you're quite an advanced person, like, advanced athlete or client yourself, you're thinking, really? Really, do I need to learn to sit down on a bench, come back up? But a lot of people do, a lot of people do. When you've been doing this job a while, you'll realize that most people can't do the things that you fitness enthusiasts take for granted because you've been doing it for so long and you know, you've, you've, you've trained yourself to be able to do those things. So yes, developing somebody's ability to sit down on a bench, come back up, and you can change the height of those things as well. So I've got obviously a bench that I train people using, but I've got uh, a step and I can change the height of the step to get that lower and lower and lower. Um, I've also got these yoga bricks that I use. So if the bench was too low, I can put a yoga brick on top to just raise it up a bit. So, you know, use your imagination, obviously make sure things are always safe, but just figure out ways that you can make it easier for somebody to, to just enough challenge that, it, that it, it gives them that progressive overload, but without it being so hard, they just can't do it. Now you can do the same thing with things like push-ups, for example. So with push-ups, we can shorten the lever. So instead of doing a full push-up, you can do it with your knees on the floor. We call that like a three-quarter push-up. The knees are back. If you bring the knees in closer, shortens the lever even more into a box push-up. If that's still too hard, you can do a push-up on the wall. Um, you can also do chest presses on the suspension trainer. So when it comes to the programming side of relative strength, now start off with a sensible number of reps. Now there is, none of this is set in stone as far as the reps go, because if somebody's able to do more reps than they did the week before or two weeks previously, they are improving relative strength. They just are, you know, you do the maths, they're, they're getting better relative strength. But in the early days, I would certainly aim to work on probably your sort of the same rep range we use for like stabilization. You want enough reps that they're practicing the movement without getting so fatigued that it's affecting their, uh, their quality and their, their sort of movement efficiency. So I, I think eight reps is always a nice number because there's enough there that they're training the brain to develop coordination, proprioception, and, and their relative strength without too much fatigue. So number eight, maybe 10, probably not more than that. So think about that when you're doing it. If you're doing unilateral stuff and um, you know, single leg, single arm, you know, potentially even less, maybe just five reps, but anything from that sort of five to 10 range, I think is nice. Um, remember you, you've got your bands, so all the time, think about how can I regress this exercise? How can I progress it? So rather than keep adding more load or, um, or, or adding more reps, I would say the way to progress these things are the slowly removing the, the, the utilization of bands or suspension trainers and doing everything complete, you know, body weight only, full sort of calisthenic style workout. Um, that would be your first priority and obviously improving range of movement. So when there's good range of movement, when someone can do the full exercise, you know, taking out all the added assistance, then you can consider adding load. You know, because if I, I've got, I, I haven't got anyone at the moment that's got this type of relative strength, but I remember a guy that was training before, you know, I could 
stick a, uh, I've got like a, uh, what I don't know what it's called now. Um, it's a, like a, uh, a waist, <laughs> I don't know what to call it, a belt. My mind went blank then, belt, that's a simple word. Don't know why I forgot that. A belt that goes around your middle, it's got a chain that hangs off it, and then you can kind of thread a weight plate through it, or you can wrap it around a dumbbell, or clip it on. So I, this guy, I would get to do pull-ups and dips and things with a weight plate or a dumbbell hanging from him because his relative strength was so good. It's like, okay, we need to progress things more. So there's no end to how much you can develop somebody's relative strength. Once they can shift their own body weight around comfortably, effectively, rather than just keep adding rep after rep after rep after rep, so they're doing 50 reps of things, you're better off than adding in additional load. So you've got things like your loaded carries, which we talked about during the stabilization uh, podcast. Um, you've got um, weighted dips, weighted chins. Um, you can even put a weighted vest on for doing things like pull-ups, sorry, push-ups. Well, and pull-ups, but push-ups as well. Okay, there we go. So take-homes from everything. So we relative strength is great for athleticism and just general quality of life, particularly as we're getting older our ability to how to move our own body weight around, get out of chairs, get off the floor, get down to the floor, climb trees with our grandkids, run around. That is going to make life better and much more worth living. <laughs> um, we, we can do that by programming body weight exercises. And if the person can't do a body weight exercise, we can regress it with shortening ranges of motion, we can use additional implements like bands, suspension trainers, um, benches, blocks, boxes. Okay, that's everything I'm going to say today about relative strength. So hopefully you now know what relative strength is and you can do the little equation. Load divided by body weight, that will give you a percentage or a strength to weight ratio number. You understand the benefits of it and you understand how to program that for your clients so they can improve their relative strength. And in the next episode, I'm gonna be talking about maximal strength. What are the benefits of that? How can we program that for our clients so they can improve their maximal strength? There we go. Right, I've talked enough today. I'm gonna to go for a nice hike, I think. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Stay active. Now, if you enjoyed today's episode, something you can do for me is subscribe to my show and if you know anyone else that might be interested in this content then please share it with them too you can also head over to our socials and follow us on tiktok instagram facebook and youtube but if you're ready to take that next step visit our website www.stormfitnessacademy.co.uk fill out a contact form that will come straight to me i will contact you shortly afterwards and i look forward to speaking to you then.